Alright, I think there was another comment I wanted to get to. So, uh, first of all, um, BRL says uh, he's going to put together a video on this. So, I subbed him. Alright, here he is. And uh, look forward to that. And the real ST says grievous, not grievous. Well, thank you very much. My English is not is not very good, so I appreciate that. I think they get this lie of Christ reigning a thousand years from Bible colleges, or they're listening to teachers who went to Bible college. You're exactly right. They're getting it from men because they're not getting it from the Bible it's not in the Bible I just uh, watched a video this morning and see if I can find it the trumpets and it's, it's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I love this guy. I sub to him. Got a lot of great ideas, thoughts. Talks about interesting stuff. So this is the same place, the bottomless pit, where Satan will be bound for 1,000 years uh, after the millennial reign of Christ. We'll have a after the millennial reign of Christ. The, the problem is there is no where in the Bible that says there's a millennial reign of Christ. It's not there. Nowhere in here, and not in Revelation 20, not anywhere in the Bible does it say there's a thousand year reign of Christ. It's just not there, fellas. And so I just gonna, I, this is not the first time I've tried to reach out to him look it's not there there is no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years anywhere in the Bible just if you just read Revelation 20 it's very clear they reign with Christ they reign with him the idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years come on man he reigns for a thousand years and then he stops reigning and is that when the zombies take over or are the zombies here all the time what's going on man this idea is not in, it's not supported by the Bible at all when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of of the world. Alright, and so and then this is the video. I, I did this on this question. Great question. And uh, I'm not sure that I saw this one, so let's read this one. Wow, it's a book. If any man take a wife and go into her and hate her and give occasion to of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city of the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hates her. And lo, he has given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give him, or give them unto the father of the damsel, because he has brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife, he may not put her away all his days, but if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city, 
shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house so shalt thou put evil away from among you if a man be found lying with a woman married to the husband then they shall both of them die both the man that lay with the woman and the woman so shalt thou put away evil from Israel if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband and a man find her in the city and lie with her then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city and ye shall stone them with stones that they die the damsel because she cried not being in the city and the man because he humbled his neighbor's wife so thou shalt put away evil from among you but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her then the man only <coughs> excuse me then the man only that lay with her shall die but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death for as when a man rises against his neighbor and slay him even so is this matter for he found her in the field and betrothed the damsel cried and there was none to save her if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed be trothed yeah and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her he may not put her away all his days a man shall not take his father's wife nor discover his father's skirt and so on and so forth so I'm not sure I thought there was going to be a question there I, Paul, I, I guess but that's yeah no that's always great to read though hey the state I live in has been showing similar ads for months don't vote for so-and-so they're too extreme for you yeah yeah I I some believe and it's to me it I'm looking at, at this as not as um, you know vote this way or vote that way I'm looking at this as propaganda this is not about choice this is about brainwashing you that's how I look at it I, MDs okay so you seem to be saying that the English translation of the body of the Bible is perfect but the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts are not right so <clears throat> there are thousands upon thousands of Hebrew and Greek manuscripts and they're not they don't all agree so which ones are perfect and this here uh, just keep an eye on that one you do realize that the English were translated from the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts right I don't know that I, I don't know that at all how many languages were involved and which manuscripts I don't even know that so that's assumed and those manuscripts they're not the originals so uh, what's that matter we have hundreds of versions of English Bibles many of which contradict each other that's true you seem to be saying that we shouldn't go back and look at the Hebrew or Greek manuscript that's what I'm saying absolutely because one you don't know Hebrew and you don't know Greek and it would be better for you to learn English the language that you're born into alright so if you're born into English 
learn English, right? If you don't know English, how are you gonna go? How are you gonna know a language that nobody's born into, right? If you don't know the language you're born into, how are you going to learn and know a language nobody is born into? It makes no. And it would, these are just languages. These aren't the words of God. These are languages that have passed away. You do realize that the Roman Catholic Church, pagan men, not God, put those, put together those 66 books, right? Wrong. The Roman Catholic Church, pagan men, men in general, are not in control of the Word of God. You're absolutely mistaken. No way in hell are men responsible for the words of God. God is in absolute control of those books. And God is in absolute control of your own body right now. You would not live and breathe if it were not for God. He controls it all. Intentionally leaving out many books were with... Wait, what? what? Intentionally leaving out many books were with them. Uh, no. I, I don't know. What, I've never heard anybody say. So of the 66 books. Oh, I see. So there's supposed to be more books. I got you. Uh, Yahusha. Uh, Jesus. Yahusha. What is this here? Yabba Dabba Doo said, Beware of the scribes. The scribes. Yeah. Be that's obvious, right? I mean that we see evidence of that in all these modern perversions, just like you pointed out, if they're falsifying the word of God corrupting the Word of God in the English language you can be sure that it was done in the Hebrew in the Greek all right it's it, you're not being honest with yourself to say well they corrupt the Bible in the English but they don't corrupt the Bible in the Hebrew and the Greek uh, that's not being honest with you that's not being honest with others that's not dis that's you're not being genuous all right beware of the scribes but you seem to be saying that nothing could have been mistranslated well <laughs> apparently th this is the first time you've heard me talk on it and maybe I did misspeak I don't know maybe I misrepresented what I believe so to me it's quite clear the King James Bible is not a translation it is the Bible it is the perfect pure Word of God in the English language and all other modern versions in the English language are corrupt and nothing could have been mistranslated so that's <clears throat> that Oh, how do I say this? The, so what's the these modern perversions? They they mistranslate. In fact, I can I contend they're not even basing their translations off of any manuscript, Greek, Hebrew, Chinese, nothing. They're basing it on the copyright laws. They have words in their translations that have no basis in Greek or Hebrew at all and because of that that's why I believe they're they're not they're using this idea that they're basing it off the latest and greatest manuscripts but then when you look at their translation they use words not based on any manuscript in any language anywhere in the world it, which leads me to c conclude that they're just basing it on copyright laws so that they can sell their Bible translation. That's it. They want to make the money. You don't think 
that he was really called Jesus, do you? Jesus comes from which means the son of Zeus. <clears throat> okay. Um, his name is Jesus. Okay. Let's see if this is Zeus. We'll find out here. Oh, no. The Word of God, <clears throat> excuse me, says nothing about Zeus. Let's see what it says about Jesus. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Right there it is. So you're saying, I can't trust the Bible. I've got to trust you to know what Jesus says. Now this is important. All right. Now this is very, very important. You better get this one right. Neither is there salvation in any other. Um, oh my goodness. Where's that here? Did I go too far? I, I can't remember where it was at. Where was that at? Oh, good night. Right there it is. Okay, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by, <clears throat> even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's it. The name of Jesus. That's the only name. This, yeah. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I don't remember if you're the one that said something about Yeshua. Yehushua. Yabidabadua. I, I, that's not in the Bible. I, you know, I could prove it. Here, let's prove it. Not zero, zero. So you think this guy is gonna save you? I'm telling you, <clears throat> this guy is the only name that can save you. So, in my experience, the only people that try to get you away from Jesus is the devil and people that hate the Lord Jesus Christ that's there's no other way around it look you believe in a perfect Bible you're making this argument there's a perfect Bible well do me a favor and show me this perfect Bible that you believe in whether it's in Hebrew whether it's in Greek whether it's in English whether it's in Chinese whatever language Show me this perfect Bible that you believe is the pure Word of God. At any language, anywhere, any time in the world. I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'm telling you, we got it in the English language. And in the English language, it's the King James Bible. I'm not going to speak for other languages. I barely know English, but it's the only language I know. And I know... In the English language, we have a perfect Bible. It's the King James Bible. All right, and then this idea of translations. Okay, let's cover this real quick. Um, let's see. In Genesis 2, Adam says, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's a translation. Right, this is a translation. You go to your Greek or your Hebrew or your Chinese, it's going to be a translation. No matter what, when it was originally written, it was a translation. Because this, when he said that, he was speaking the original language. And nobody after God confounded the language did anybody speak that language. So those words were translated into this language after 
God confounded the language. All right, so where's this at here? Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the one language that was spoken of by Adam was spoken no more. All right, and it's illogical to say that that first language, that original language, it's illogical to say that they continue to speak that language after God confounded it. Illogical. Think about it. And then, of course, in the resurrection, at the end of the world, we're going to be given a new language, a pure language. All right. So all the languages in the world today that are spoken will not be spoken in the resurrection. All right. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point, BRL. I didn't understand it. if you talked about in the video, but in some American states they have extended abortion even on babies born up to a half month after birth. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's insane. It's insane. Abortion, any abortion for any reason is murder. No matter how you slice it up, it's murder. You're killing somebody. You ought to be thankful that you didn't get aborted. So they legalized murder. That's what they did. They, they've done. Legalized murder. And what they don't tell you, what really irritates me, or really burns my hide, if you will, is that whoever gets an abortion, they live with that regret, that sorrow, for the rest of their life. There's no way to get around it. You can make it legal, but it doesn't take away the sorrow that these women suffer all the days of their life. They do it to have more good blood for their satanic rights. Well, yeah. yeah, it's satanic, no question about it. I've always viewed the Lord turning Lot's wife into a pillar of salt as a warning to women well, it's a warning for all of us, right? Do as you've been asked. You won't always be told four or five times. Well, I don't know where you're getting that at, buddy. Come on now. Like the Greeks' Pandora box tell. I don't know it. Women are weak when it comes to curiosity and gossip. It's okay, usually. But when it's the Creator Himself via two powerful angels giving you that order, don't look back, have faith. It won't kill you just this once. Thank you for the videos. These topic topics are rarely ever held up to Scripture in order to discern the truth. Okay, so I, but I, you know, I'm not sure that I go along. Uh, you talk about women being weak. Uh, they're the weaker vessel now, but let's not take it too far. Come on now. All right. So yeah, I you know this. I don't know how you're getting this. Uh, you know, listen up, woman. Do as you're told. That that type of mindset. Uh, she is part of your she is your flesh as well when you marry a woman her flesh is your flesh and your flesh is her flesh you guys are one flesh so um yeah if if if, if it's right to um for a woman to be obedient to her husband then so also is it right for a husband to be obedient to his wife. All right, she is your helper, not your servant. All right, so uh, you know what? I'm not saying. Uh, well, I'm not saying you're you're teaching something wicked here. 
I just don't, I'm not seeing this. Uh, you know, relating this to, you know, Lot's wife. It's simply, it simply means don't look back on your old life. It's really as simple as that. She looked back on her old life, and because God was in the process of destroying them all, she also got caught up in that destruction and was turned into a pillar of salt. Thanks for mentioning Lot's wife. Regarding looking back at your old life, you have encouraged me to stay forward or stay focused and keep moving forward. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. that you know. You look at these verses and they do nothing but help and it it becomes problematic when people don't understand it correctly and teach it falsely and so I've always contended just read the Bible and know that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God you don't need secret um, you know you don't need experts telling you what it says you don't need secret knowledge you don't need to go outside of the Bible you don't need these uh, serpent concordances you don't need the serpent to tell you what God says. All, all it takes is faith, believing, knowing that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God, and it's specifically to you. It's to you, it's for you, and the Word of God endures forever. All right? okay. So that's the secret, that's the key to understanding is faith. It's always been about faith. Alright, so great comments there, fellas. Appreciate it. 